Hey everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, today we're gonna talk about going from spreadsheets to scalable streamlined test management. So by way of introduction, my name is Zach Sergio, uh, testing transformation strategist at Tricenis. And uh, today we're gonna talk about uh, a better way to manage your test case library. So with that, we'll keep the preamble short and we'll get started. So um, launching right into it, you know, when I'm uh, <laughs> taking a look at a video or a webinar like this, I personally always like to know, am I in the right place? So starting with that, instead of a boring agenda slide, um, if any of these questions are something that have crossed your mind, you are indeed in the right spot. So um, for those of you that might just be starting a QA practice and you're looking at ways to manage your test cases, um, you might be looking at Excel and other variety of other options, you're in the right spot. Um, and if you're already using Excel and you might be at certain points along the continuum of using Excel, whether it's working okay, but you're curious about alternatives, or you're really ready to get off Excel, um, anything in between, you're also in the right spot. And so I think it's best to understand, you know, the logic that goes into using something like an Excel in the first place. So you know, we'll see if this little story sounds familiar. It's a more of a hypothetical uh, vignette here. So, you know, a lot of times it starts with uh, a thought, something to the effect of, hey, we really need to start managing our test cases in one central spot. Um, the obvious and low-hanging fruit is that, hey, you can use Excel. Everybody already has spreadsheets in their workstations and laptops. And you don't have to go get another system or a piece of software. It's right there. You can probably get a free template on you know, after a five-second Google search here. You know, as an added bonus, you don't even need to go back and forth with your IT or your purchasing department because you already have it. Um, and then it's a quick win. Before you know it, you have all of your tests in, in one spot. So, you know, problem solved, right? So a lot of times it does seem like fun and games at first. Might all be you know, sunshine and, and rainbows and whatnot. But before too long, things do tend to start unraveling. Um, so as, as sprints and releases roll on, you might find yourself uh, you know, in a typical planning process for a new sprint. So what does that lead you to? It leads you to maybe cloning a new workbook and then or cloning a workbook, adding it to a new folder. Um, that's all right at first. It's easy to stay on top of. But you know, then you might have a little case of spreadsheet sprawl start. You might have to go have uh, another sheet that's responsible for tracking all of the other ones. And guess what? All that has to be manually maintained. Um, then you find yourself, uh, or naturally you're going to start finding bugs, so you ask yourself, where should we track all of those? Maybe the answer is we should create another spreadsheet. Well, with all these things that chip away at your time and um, you know, every, every minute spent looking for something or maintaining something is a minute away from something more productive and uh, any other high leverage activities. So inevitably, you don't have enough time to get the testing done that you actually need to do, so now you're having to go tell dev that, Hey guys, sorry, we're gonna need another day or two because we spent more time maintaining all of this than actually executing. I mean, you probably might admit that last part, right? So now you're at a little case of, you have some dissonance between where you started and you know maybe initially you're like, all right, I think we can live with this. It's it's gonna be fine, we'll, we'll deal with it. It's, it's the devil we know, so to speak. But it's probably gonna keep unraveling. So what'll end up happening is that you get to this state of, you know, you're frustrated, but you're just feeling stuck with it. So you're just going to commit yourself to not having a bad attitude, but you're going to make it work. So um, now when you roll into the office or open up your, your computer in the morning at home, now you're asking yourself, oh, man, what, what version of that sheet are we supposed to use? Where did it go? Um, you know, maybe Excel does Excel things and files get corrupted. It happens. Um, so, you know, if that happens when you have a giant Excel sheet full of tons of data, you might end up losing a half a work or a day of work or hours here and there. Uh, appreciated Excel. Uh, and then you know, as your application inevitably involves, whether you're um, a shop that's trying to release on a very frequent basis, you know, daily or every other day, whether you're maybe a traditional agile shop and it's every two or three weeks, maybe it's monthly or once a quarter as, as a waterfall shop, Nonetheless, you're going to have changes. All of those changes are going to render most, if not all, of your test cases obsolete over the course of time. So again, now you have another chore added to your list where you're maintaining those tests as well. So, um, And I don't think any of you in QA signed up to maintain a spreadsheet all day. I don't, I don't think that was the initial appeal, but it kind of pulls you into it a little bit. So, um, But as an added 
negative bonus, I guess I should say, um, when it comes to reporting, that tends to be rather cumbersome because it might sound simple to go say, hey, I'm going to run a pivot table on all this and maybe track test velocity by tester over the course of the week. Well, all of that's going to be a little trickier than maybe you signed up for. So when management or executives or leadership's asking for a report on you know burn down or time remaining, um, you, you might find yourself uh, in response being like, do you have any idea how long it takes to put all of that information together? So great, there's another half a day. So if if this sounds like you, you, you have officially arrived uh, in Excel Hell, no, I'm, I'm sorry to be the, the bearer of bad news, but if that sounds like you, you probably already know that. So the, the good news is though, um, is, is we're not gonna have to stay there. But before we look at alternatives, um, again, let's recap how we got here in the first place. So, and, and why did Excel go from being a viable system that could potentially work to absolutely a sore thumb in your tech stack and it can't afford to stay there anymore? So again, the constant in your environment for really any software shop we work with is, is, is change. So as change occurs, your scripts are gonna become outdated. That's gonna create a growing maintenance burden. Um, and version control can be a huge time drain. You couple that with the lack of integration. So if you're uh, uh, to your, your project management system, so maybe you're using ADO boards, maybe you're using Atlassian Jira. Um, well, neither of those really have a, a seamless integration back to your tests or your, your manual tests, right? So there's gonna be this silo effect between QA and dev because of that. Um, and that lack of traceability uh, is gonna make bug reporting way more difficult than it needs it needs to be. So. Um, but that's just the you know half of the problem here. Um, again, every minute that you spent looking for something or maintaining something is a minute that you could have been, uh, spent executing a test and maybe finding a bug earlier in your um, uh, your earlier in your delivery cycle. And I think we've all seen the graphs and reports that um, catching something in in a QA environment is far less costly to remediate than something that leaks into staging or or especially production. Um, and then uh, as an added negative bonus here again, again, reporting is gonna be way more uh, uh, cumbersome than it needs to be. So now you have not only a situation where QA is having to take more time, you're delaying releases, bugs are leaking more than they should be. Um, there's a communication gap. You, you have these uh, breakdowns of trust because of that. Um, and now you know QA where likely it's a, a, an organization or a business unit that does want to be able to confidently give a go or no go decision. You know, ultimately, you want to be able to communicate risk to the business uh, before you know deploying to production. But how can you do that when you don't have the right systems in place? So, um, again, Excel is great for a lot of things, just not test management. Let's let's maybe leave Excel to you know, our, our friends in operations, maybe in, in finance and accounting. I think that was more of the original intended uh, use case for Excel. Uh, I, don't, I don't think test management was too high on that list. Um, but again, got some good news here if, if you're feeling stuck with uh, the, the current state of things. Um, and, and again, I think the, uh, the, the mental image, I couldn't pick anything better than uh, you know, the, the office space scene where you're, you're bashing the, the copier machine. It's a pretty similar emotion we uh, tend to feel towards our uh, Excel sheet. So um, now that we're done uh, kicking that, let's let's roll in here. All right, so now it is time for that boring agenda slide. So, um, you know, naturally our starting point, wanted to have a little fun with it at the beginning. Uh, we, we had to um, decide that we we're either A, going to climb out of Excel hell, or B, avoid it altogether. Um, both are great options, right? So uh, from here over the course of the next maybe 20, 25 minutes, uh, want to first start by just introducing you to you know, why why test management um, can and should be the centerpiece of a, of a QA strategy or your QA practice. Um, and there's a lot of different flavors of tools on the market. So I've been working with these types of systems for, for over seven years now, um, you know, between my team and I, but you know, speaking for myself personally, lost track of how many organizations that uh, have been able to consult with as they're looking to make improvements. So i um, been deeply familiar with the market, so I'm gonna break it down into really three main categories so that you can understand what your options are. Um, and then from there, it's, I'm gonna pose some questions to you that um, you can start to formulate um, <clears throat> the requirements for what you really need out of a potential solution because you wanna have the right type of tool for the job, right? 
Um, and then what we've what I've found over the years is that there's a lot of recurring you know, misconceptions and, you know, myths about test management. So I'm going to take some time to, to debunk a few of those along the way. Uh, but ultimately, I want to help you um, come to a conclusion where you can determine, hey, this type of system is right for us based on where we're at and where we want to go. Um, and then ultimately, uh, you can make a decision, but you still have to justify this internally. So what I also wanted to share with you today is, uh, a framework that you can use and, and steal for yourself to where you can make a case for change internally. Uh, and if whether it's a, um, you know, a, a, an entry level plugin or an advanced system, it's all got to get funded, right? So we'll, we'll go through some, some frameworks where you can be that, that change agent internally. Uh, and then beyond that, you know, last, last stop before we get from you know, point A to Z here is, is it's not just about picking a tool. It's about making sure it's implemented the right way. It's about making sure that you have the uh, right systems in place so that everybody that's using it can learn it as quick as possible and that the change management process is as smooth as it can be. So that's really the, uh, the big stumbling block that I've seen uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of customers of all shapes and sizes. Uh, yeah, it's a big, big roadblock a lot of times. So I'm going to try to save you some of the, the headache that might come from implementing a new system. So I think we got our game plan here. Let's keep rolling. So if that sounds like a plan, Nick Cage thinks it is, we're, we're, we're going to go here.